Hi, it's Mike here with Ugtastic, and I'm sitting down, well not really sitting down, we're on a Skype call, but I'm talking with Joel Claremont, who runs the Milwaukee PHP Users Group. Uh, hi Joel, thanks for taking the time to chat today. Hello. Hi, so you run the Milwaukee PHP Users Group. Um, how long has that group been around? What, what, what do you guys do with the PHP group? So the group was formed in December 2009, mm -hmm. and actually I was not the person who formed it. Okay. So it was, I, I had a note on Meetup expressing an interest in PHP groups in my area, but for whatever reason, I never took the initiative to start the group. So anyways, I was on vacation in Florida. It was December 2009. Somebody started the group, Aaron Saray, and like within five minutes of me getting that email, I joined. And so we, we kind of started it together, but okay. I have to give him credit for <laughs> actually for plunking down the money in Meetup and, and getting it started. So our first meetup was in January Okay. because I was down in December, down in Florida for the whole month. Um, I think we had like six or seven people at our first meetup, and we were a bit ambitious in trying to do it twice a month. Right. So we were going to meet on the second and fourth Tuesday. I think we did that through summer, and in summer it really got difficult because, you know, it's Wisconsin. We actually had some sunshine yeah. to get people to um, – <laughs> You have to take Give advantage some, of it. Some additional free time yeah. <laughs> was tough. So, but we've been going strong at least once a month, um, and, and second Tuesday of the month is when we've been meeting for the last couple of years. Okay, and what was it that made you want to do it twice a month? Was was there a particular reason for that? Um, naivety. I don't know. <laughs> it was uh, it was something we were both interested in doing. Mm -hmm. and I th I think it just well once a week seemed way too much. And I guess in our initial estimation, once a month seemed like maybe not enough. Mm -hmm. I, part of it, too, was maybe somebody couldn't make it to one meetup, but they could make it to the other. So at least most people could make it to at least one a month. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, finding speakers, a venue wasn't a problem. We have a pretty stable location that we can meet at whenever we need. Mm -hmm. But um, finding speakers, topics, getting people, you know, excited about it just twice a month was a bit too much. But once a month seems to be a really nice, nice fit. Yeah, it's it's a kind of a a common pattern to have that once a month. You can just kind of plan for it. Where if it's twice a month, it's I'd have to like what you said with the speakers. You'd have two different contents and well, and and to make it even crazier, our initial format was we had two presentations per meeting. So oh. our our thought was we'd try to have like a kind of a either a beginner's or maybe more business-oriented one, mm -hmm. um, soft skills for the first half. And the second half, we'd have a little more in-depth, a little more hands-on. And um, now our format has been just one presentation with a little more focus on um, group interaction. People hang out more afterwards and, and exchange ideas, help each other with problems. So, yeah, so we, early on, it was four a month. That was, that was really tough to do. Yeah, so now it's more tech and then social. Okay, and uh, what kind of, uh, when you were doing the soft skills, that was kind of interesting. Most, I haven't heard that very often from many groups. Um, was that something that was well-received, or you said you kind of stopped doing that? Was it just for lack um, of speakers? No, we, we still have some talks that are not super technical. You know, we, we've had talks on more business side of things, like mm -hmm. how to find clients, um, freelancing, we even have something, you know, because PHP is a web development language primarily. Mm -hmm. We'll have stuff on maybe JavaScript frameworks or, um, you know, it's, it runs the full spectrum. It's not all, you know, this is purely PHP code and that's it that we talk about. Right. And uh, so, like, do you have a pretty vibrant community? Do you, how many people do you get per month? So there, I just pulled it up on Meetup. We, we are at 262 members right now. That's which, pretty good. Sounds like a lot. Um, average meetup, I would say, is probably a 15 to 20. Okay. Add, I think on our high end, maybe 35. Oh, so wow. in the three years we've been running, um, once a year we've been able to bring in somebody kind of from outside of the, of the region. So our first year we had uh, somebody from Zend, who's one of the big corporate entities in the PHP world. He flew up from Texas and gave a nice talk. Um, last year we had... Uh, Keith Casey, who was representing Twilio, which, you know, they do a lot with the community and, and APIs. And um, so he, he came up and, 
I think he's out of Texas too. And then uh, this year we had somebody from orchestra um, or engineered is who bought orchestra. Oh, yeah. so they, they had somebody come out and speak to us just two months ago. Okay. So, so those tend to draw more people. Are you are you getting sponsors that bring them in, or were they in town for a conference and they came and talked, or? Um, kind of. Well, in in all three cases, their corporate entity sponsored them. Okay. You know, so Zen sponsored uh, Kevin when he came. Twilio sponsored Keith, and uh, Engineered sponsored Liz when she came. So that's worked out great. Yeah, as a as a small user group, we could not afford to fly people in right. and put them up at night and. Um, so that's that's been great. And plus, they usually come with goodies like giveaways and, and mm-hmm. raffles and things like that too. So that's that's part of what the appeal is. Um, and engineer even bought us pizza and, and and food and stuff too. So that also brings people to the meetings. I mean, yeah. little things like that because we we typically have our meetings at six p.m. So people are just getting off of work, maybe haven't eaten yet. So knowing that there's pizza or, or something there makes it a little bit more likely that they'll want to show up. Before we were talking on the interview, you kind of mentioned that you're starting to dabble in some other uh, platforms and languages and are going to those user groups and conferences. Um, just curious, uh, you know, wh- wh- what is it that you're, you're looking into and which communities are you starting to go to and what has been your experience? Okay. Yeah, so in August, I had a little bit more free time. I sold my consulting company. And one of the things that I always wanted to dig deeper into was Ruby. And uh, I, I'm familiar with the language. I even maintained a small open source project in Ruby for a few years, but never really used it as part of my my work, as part of my day-to-day job. So I decided to get started. Um, we have a Milwaukee Ruby group here uh, right in town, meets once a month as well. So I've been going to that. In August, we also had Madison Ruby which um, was, was um, f- the first Ruby-focused conference I've been at, and it was just fantastic. So I, I highly recommend going to that. I'll be there again next year. And, um, and even, it was last month, I presented at the, the Milwaukee Ruby group on Ruby Motion, which is a tool chain for building iOS apps in, in Ruby. So I've been enjoying it. I'm mm-hmm. still not really using it for my day-to-day work. I have an iOS project I'm working on right now with Ruby Motion, but like I haven't even gotten into Rails yet or anything like that. So um, still early days, but I am I, I find the community be, to be pretty welcoming. Nobody has uh, booed me yet for saying I'm a PHP developer, <laughs> so it's been pretty friendly. That's good. That's good. Um, overall, as far as like the content or the approach, has there been any kind of difference that you've seen between a PHP focused uh, group or community versus going to the Ruby community? Yeah, you know, I guess um, one thing I've noticed that's real popular in the Ruby community is the notion of pairing, of of being able to just, you know, tap somebody's shoulder and say, hey, you know, can can we pair for a half hour? Right. And um, maybe not, you don't even know that person. <laughs> um, I, I did that at Ruby Madison just to kind of try it out. Right get outside of my comfort zone a little bit, and I was I was amazed. Um, I also did a little bit of Ruby interaction at a code retreat, and that was really my first experience doing a, a full day of pair programming, right. and I loved it. And, yeah. and actually, that's something I'd like to see kind of grow in other communities, too. I think the PHP community could benefit from that. Other communities could benefit from that as well. Yeah, there it's fun, but those those code retreats are intense. <laughs> that's yeah. that's not that's not a normal pairing experience. Or I, I shouldn't say that. Um, <laughs> but well, anyway, thank you very much for taking the time to sit down and, and chat. Yeah, you're welcome.